I'm Ryan Moore. I'm the director and producer of the upcoming Manny movie, and you're watching Bellas TV. Boxing is the cruelest sport because it takes so much from a man. No other sport asks a man to sacrifice himself so deeply. The boxer, Manny Pacquiao, has always been a fighter. In a sport where victory and someone's destiny can be changed by one punch, a true fighter is defined by how he gets up when knocked down. The documentary is narrated by Academy Award nominee Liam Neeson, and um, it's directed by myself and Leon Gast, who won the Academy Award for his movie um, on Muhammad Ali that, that was called When We Were Kings. And um, the film chronicles Manny's life from his early beginnings in boxing all the way up to the present as a active boxer slash congressman. This film is the first and only film that people will be able to get a really intimate look at Manny's life. The score was composed by Lauren Balfa, who worked on, uh, who works alongside Hans Zimmer, and he's done uh, films like Inception, Sherlock Holmes, The Dark Knight, Iron Man. Um, original music for the film was done by uh, Chad Hugo and Yard Noise. He, and uh, Chad is uh, re most recognizable for his work with uh, NERD and the Neptunes. So we have artists like um, Apple from the Black Eyed Peas and um, Far East Movement, the Jabberwockies, and um, there's a lot of great artists. So it's a, it's, a, it's a really fun project. Incredible. How long have you been working on this film? I've been working, I started developing this film about five years ago and started filming back in 2010. So, you know, we're in 2014 now, so. Wow. Yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, what did it take to get the project to happen in the beginning? Like, how did it, how was it born? How did it come into fruition? I knew that there was so much to the story because he would come to the ring, um, you know, his opponent would walk in, you know, just completely stone cold faced, you know, and Manny would come in smiling, waving his hands at everyone, kind of, you know, didn't even know he was, it, it didn't even appear like he was going to war. And then he would kneel down and pray with his head against the corner post. And I thought, oh, this is an interesting person, you know, this guy. And after he completely kicks her ass, he goes and he kind of checks on them after the fight, you know, completely compassionate. So I thought, wow, you know, this guy must have an incredible story. And that was years and years ago when I first saw him fight. And then, you know, by chance, uh, I got to meet him um, through my friends and family who were doing some charity work with him. And then um, it just kind of took off from there. Um, I got to learn more about his life and him, and I realized that, you know, his story had to be shared. I don't think that anyone in history has lived a life like he has. Just to kind of paint a picture, the night of a fight, the entire country comes to a standstill. So 100... Oh, over 100 million people literally stop what they're doing and they watch him fight. Wow. There's no traffic in the streets. Um, there's no crime. Um, the rebels in the army stop fighting and everyone is just glued to him fighting. He's literally like a symbol of hope to them. So you can imagine, you know, after a fight, during fights, when he's in Congress, just being with him all that time and being in public with him and seeing people swarm him left and right, it's like, I've never seen anything like it. Wow. And um, even here, you know, going around with them here in the States, like, it's unreal. And I think, I think that people respond to him because of his story, you know, because of the fact that he, he symbolizes um, what's possible, you know, coming from nothing, from abject poverty, and then, you know, becoming one of the highest paid athletes of all time, and then becoming a singer and an actor and a congressman and being on the cover of Time magazine. And, you know, he still holds the Guinness World Record for the most titles in weight divisions. So eight world titles in eight weight divisions. No one's ever done that before. But one of the things I've, I found very interesting about him is he does everything the same. He's a, a creature of routine. And I've never seen anything like it. It's like clockwork for him. Eight weeks before a fight, he'll start training in the Philippines. And four weeks before, he'll come here 
He eats every day about 7,000 calories. He burns about 5,000. And he eats at the same time every day. He rests at the same time. Does 1,000 sit-ups a day, 1,000 to 2,000 sit-ups a day. I forget how many miles he runs, but um, he jump ropes for like an hour. He does everything routine, like it's on the mark. He does everything the same. Leading up to a fight, um, he leaves every Monday from the same place um, at the same time, for the most part. He goes to the same gas station to gas up. He rides the first SUV he ever bought here in the States, even though it's like it's not the nicest vehicle. He just likes to keep things the same. So he'll drive into Vegas. He won't fly. He drives in same time um, and he does everything literally the same. And I think the reason why he does it is because it's like clockwork. No matter who the opponent is, no matter who he's facing, it's all the same. It's all the same to him. So he's not, he grounds himself that way, you know? And, and I, I found that really interesting to see how, how he keeps everything so repetitive, but disciplined, you know? He does everything exactly the same. It's so interesting to see. What I found really interesting in the Philippines was having talked to a lot of his team and, and kind of seeing how generous he is. Um, and, I, you know, he's not the kind of person who would want me to speak on this kind of stuff. So I'm not really sure how he'll feel about me sharing this, but he is strangely generous to a fault, I'd say. Um, so where he's from, they don't have a um, public hospital. So what a lot of people do is they bring their medical bills to his house and they kind of leave them in with the guard. And the guard basically takes the stack of bills and takes them over to Manny and he pays them. So people who need surgery, they need help. It's crazy because most politicians here in the US were used to politicians kind of using taxpayers' money to pay for things. But even though he has so much money and he is a congressman, um, he spends a lot of it on helping people, which is kind of, which is kind of unique, I think, as a, you know, for a politician. Um, I think that really speaks to his character. And, um, you know, I think because he grew up with so little and he understands what it feels like to be in that place. Right. Because he had, you know, there was, he was, between he and his brothers and sisters, there were six of them growing up by primarily a single mother in, in, in one of the poorest places in the Philippines. So you can see how tough it was for them. Right. So that being said, I think with how much he's achieved and how much he has, he just tends to just want to give it out and share and help people. But the funny thing is actually the Filipinos didn't want him to run for politics. Oh, yeah. They didn't want him to become a politician. The reason being is it's so corrupt in that country. Sadly, it's such a, it's, it's known to be very corrupt. So they just didn't want him and what he stood for to be soiled right so but you know for him for, for at least for from his standpoint his goal is to change the landscape of politics in the philippines it's bigger than boxing it's bigger than being a prize fighter his journey now is about fighting and winning for a people huge burden but he accepts it why do I box? Why do I fight? Because it's God's will.